Of course I would miss bread. I've always eaten bread with like everything. I still need it, of course. So I cannot tell you how grateful I am that there's still a way to get it. Sì, ovviamente anche in Italia abbiamo sentito parlare del trafficante di pane. Secondo alcuni, secondo la leggenda, è il miglior pane della storia. So, there's still some people saying that there's some sort of conspiracy theory against bread industry or something like that. Listen, that doesn't make any sense. Last week, the government announced a worldwide ban on bread because some scientists have discovered that its intake can be harmful for those who have the virus. For the past seven days, bread can no longer be sold or bought anywhere. This news has suddenly surprised the population accustomed to eating bread on a daily basis. Luckily, we have the opportunity to talk to virologist Tomas Santano, who will explain the situation further. So, well, there are several studies that has proven that transgenic bread complicates COVID-19 infections. It allows the virus to duplicate at a faster pace than the body, the immune system, is able to kill, is able to get rid of. In other words, prolong the infection for a lot longer. Shipments of certain types of wheat from the U.S. after inspectors discovered an experimental grain that is not approved. The discovery of genetically modified wheat in a field in Oregon is a growing concern around the world. All of the tests that we did came up positive. Since the confinement began, there's been a shortage of products such as flour and yeast. And despite the burning bread, reliable sources have denounced there's been a new wave of bread trafficking started in California by a young bread dealer who is selling illegal bread. bread for years and nothing has ever happened. Now, all of a sudden, it's a problem. You know, I say it's bullshit. It was the easiest decision I've ever made. I've been making bread most of my life. So I decided that I would continue doing it even if it's illegal. I think everyone should be free and decide if they want to eat it or not. Because in the end, we're all grown-ups and I'm willing to provide it if they need it. Bread can be produced very quickly and at a very low cost to the manufacturers and the consumers. That's why it was so easy to sell and buy. However, there has always been some criticism on the effect on nutritional value. And now, there might be even a more concerning health issue with it. The question now is, can our society live without bread? Well, of course we can live without bread. The same way that vegans can live without meat. There's no reason to be eating bread in the current context. If someone is eating bread, it's just selfish and responsible. Dopotutto, chi non ha bisogno di pane? Tutti lo vogliamo. Degli amici mi hanno addirittura raccontato delle storie secondo cui a Civita di Bagnoreggio puoi procurarti del pane in cambio di mascherine. I have many customers. I started selling my bread to neighbors, but now I have customers from faraway cities. And even sometimes I have to refuse to take orders because I have too many of them and with all the virus problems, you know, safety first. I cannot risk traveling far away or meeting people. Flower shortage is not a problem for me. I have plenty. I even mill my own. And if not, I know where to get it. And regarding yeast, well, I don't really need yeast. I have my own sourdough starter. So what I'm gonna do now is prepare one of my deliveries. And this one is for a special client. She's one of the very first clients that I had. So what I always do is prepare 
two batches. Oh, and don't worry, I wash my hands like 100 times a day. So one batch is a frozen loaf uh, that I pre-sliced of sourdough. And another one is this a speciality from Catalonia that is called Yungat, that she really likes it. It's kind of like a dinner roll, you know. So I put everything inside a, an airtight Ziploc. I have to put it inside a pillowcase because, you know, this is a tapadera, just in case the police stops me. This is ready to be delivered. I mean, man, police has been really picky lately with all the bread trafficking. I know that I'm more visible using my car, but it's also more convenient for me. I can just like go with my car, go to a place, drop the bread, move to the following spot. We're going now to my special client to labor the bread that we prepared for. The way we do it is I usually text him asking what I want. Sometimes a baguette, sometimes a sourdough, um, you name it, he bakes it. And then he leaves it at my mailbox and I just have to pick it up. Sometimes I leave the envelope with the money there and he picks it up and he leaves the bread and that's how we usually do it. Have you ever seen him? Mm, no, <laughs> no, no, I, I've never seen him. Um, I wish I would, but I, I've never seen him. I like to think that he's like Santa Claus, you know, like someone you've never seen, but you want to see, uh, yeah. So I guess that if I ever see him, it, it's going to be like a magic moment for me. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yes! These ones are the ones that I love the most. Like, I would travel the world for these. And you should too. History repeats. We can't forget the dry law in the 20s. There will always be people willing to break the law, thinking only in their own interest. But we must understand the importance of battling this global pandemic together. This is serious. The life of millions of people is at stake. I don't really care if it's illegal. Like, I don't understand a thing about the transgenic thing they are talking about. I'm as healthy as I can be. I didn't get the virus and I'm still eating bread. And honestly, I think it's something that I'm gonna keep doing. I just enjoy so much eating bread. I'm not afraid at all. The police can come looking for me. You know the Spanish saying that goes, no todos los héroes llevan capa? Also, they don't know me. But then, what will happen when this documentary airs? <laughs> well, they can just call me whenever they want bread. I'll be there.